State Park. It is currently 6.18 in the morning and we are here for sunrise obviously and if you can tell by some of the b-roll so far it is a beautifully foggy morning here around the lake and uh, that is one of the main reasons I decided to get up early today and come out here. Um, probably got just under four hours of sleep but uh, it's always worth it, especially for, you know, mornings like these. All the ingredients were there in the forecast for fog. Um, and for those that don't know what that is, um, what I looked for is uh, the dew point being close to the actual temperature and high humidity. And also if you have that cold night air and that warm morning air that you typically see in the transitions between like spring and summer or summer and fall. Right, but we've had a cold front recently here in western New York, and it has, uh, you know, created a lot of opportunities like this recently, and, you know, with the, the weather getting back to sort of normal summer weather here, um, you know, in the next couple of days, I figured why not come out here at least one time, you know, before I kind of regret not doing so, and uh, I'm starting out on this side of the lake because... Um, there are some really nice trees um, directly across the lake from here that uh, I have been wanting to photograph for a little while. And uh, the last time I had a really nice foggy morning here was way back before I even had the 24 to 200. But now that I got the 600, which I'm currently at 600 right now for a composition, um, I can actually fully take advantage of that range, which feels so good. Um, so happy I got this thing. Uh, it's definitely going to make for a lot of incredible opportunities. There's a lot of great stuff in the water here too. Uh, a lot of twigs and branches and such. So probably going to spend a little time here. Uh, this is going to be more of just a kind of a, a sit back and enjoy type of log. Kingfisher just flew in over there. Although I, uh, I think he'll wait till I put the 24 to 200 on to make a proper appearance. Now, it's not super foggy like I was hoping it would be, but, you know, once the sun comes up, which it still won't be up for another, you know, 10 minutes or so, maybe that extra, extra warmth will really kick things off, but if it doesn't, you know, bluebird skies should allow for some pretty nice light on some subjects. And uh, I'd also like to visit the Bridal Falls Trailhead. Um, I got to scout that a few weeks ago and got a few images from there. I'll share those on the screen now. And uh, I, I kind of wonder what it looks like in the morning, at least one of the compositions that I have there. So it'd be interesting to check that out, get some information on it. I'm just gonna take another frame here of these bundles of trees just across the lake. Some nice fog beneath them. Uh, actually, the same trees I photographed in the winter. Um, it's a photo I have called uh, Deciduous Disarray. I'm going to try to go slow today, despite the conditions being really good. 
Um, but yeah, fingers crossed we get some, some great light here. There's another photo that I got too called Glimmer back in September last year. Really nice window of light comes through a opening in the trees out there where actually a trail goes through um, the trees and lets some sunlight in. So interesting to see how that's going to look, especially with the 600. Might be using this a lot today. That's, this might be the only lens that uh, stays on the camera. So we'll see. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, fingers crossed again for some great light. So I've actually uh, modified my first composition a small bit and uh, I did that to include a small tree um, that is that was just out of frame in the first take uh, on the right side and I think it does help to kind of balance the photo a little bit. Yeah, obviously the brain is still warming up, and this is my first time ever really taking a stab at this composition as well. Um, I tried to mess around with something similar at sunset a few weeks back, and uh, just missed the light. But I just want to say like how I, you know, after a little time of studying this composition, and uh, I guess it's also just like a symptom of being new. Uh, to a lens like this, you kind of tend to just want to like crop into 600 all the time. Um, but it was only when I, uh, you know, zoomed out to about 400 mil uh, that I was able to see that other tree and then decide that I wanted to include it. So don't forget to zoom out. I think uh, I think Michael Shane Blum made a really great video about, you know, telephoto lens sort of do's and don'ts in the field. And it was a really great video, actually, and that was one of the points uh, that he brought up in it. And uh, coming in handy in the field as we speak. So I'm going to reposition back on my other comp, which it has been very hard to grab focus, you know, being at 600. So I think I'm going to move my tripod, too, to get a slightly better angle so I don't have to have the center column partially extended. Um, I do have a 10 second timer uh, on, so there's like no, virtually no camera shake, or at least there shouldn't be anyways, after uh, the photo's taken. And there's like just a mountain of fog. I gotta show you guys this. Look at this. Right over there. I don't know if it'll, uh... but yeah, all that like gray there, that's all fog. Just tons of it. And uh, there's another spot too that we can take from the peninsula and I think it would be great but that requires there to be a lot of fog like there is there but like on that side of the lake on like the very southern end southeastern end this lake is shaped very weird so it's hard to like discern what's like which cardinal direction on each side because it's just oddly shaped I don't know if that makes any sense yeah I'm gonna keep with this composition here and maybe take on some other stuff over there the fog drifting above the tree line. It'd be great to do a long exposure right now, but I do not have an ND filter that can uh, fit on that lens yet, so we'll have to work with what we got. But if some fog starts billowing overhead, which it seems to be doing right now, that could also be good for this uh, particular photo. So the sun is up now, by the way. Yeah, it's been up for about almost 20 minutes. It still hasn't cleared the hills yet, though, by the looks of it, because, uh, you know, there's no clouds, so it should just flood this whole place with light any moment now. I don't think my mic was on for that last part, but I am going to go ahead and reposition now uh, to the uh, banks over there by the admin building. We should have a great view 
looking down where some of that sunlight's coming in, so I want to get over there as quickly as I can and uh, see what we can pick out with that 186. All right, so we have uh, repositioned over to the, the western side of the lake here on a nice big bank. And uh, yeah, the, the light here is, uh, it's incredible. Uh, another distant tree subject that I'm looking at right now. Um, I photographed these trees also, but from like the complete opposite side of the lake that I'm at now. And that was back in the winter. Um, I think on... I think on Christmas Eve of last year, actually. But it's really interesting to see them uh, in a new light now, especially with this uh, this lens. And I'm seeing all sorts of other stuff, like oh, these trees out here. Oh, that's that's the good stuff right there. Now, this could just be a classic case of in-the-moment hype. But I just see this on the back of my camera, and this is the favorite thing I've shot in this whole morning. Because you want to know what's going on here, and I'll switch over to video here in a second. Uh, we have all these pines right now uh, in the fog. The fog is directly above them, and uh, they're casting these shadows. Uh, and there's a whole line of them. So I'll switch over to video right now and let you guys have a look. So good, so good. I always, I always dread getting up early, and I say it every time. It's like a cliche that's always worth the lack of sleep. You know, you can always take a nap when you get home, right? Or as my one friend says, you can sleep when you're dead. There's that too. <laughs> yeah. See, now the fog is getting so much more intense over here that I'm starting to lose some of that detail in the tops of those trees. So it's just kind of becoming a low contrasty kind of style. For a moment, you could see the, the, the slope of another hill behind it kind of coming in at a nice diagonal. I think I got that in the frame as well. So that's something to work with um, later on as a potential option, whether I want that looming in the background or if I don't for more of a minimalistic look. I don't always get the opportunity to shoot super minimalistic stuff. Uh, but when those moments happen, they're just magical. And you know it too. You know it right as the second you see it on the back of your camera. You know it instantly. But uh, before I get too carried away, I do want to check back my camera here, make sure everything looks good, and it does. So, you know, focus-wise, because you can miss focus pretty easily with a telly, especially, uh, you know, being at great focal lengths. I'm at, I think, uh, 400 millimeter right now. And the sun, like I can literally just stare right at the sun. That's how diffuse it is right now. It's creating this weird effect. It got really bright. The fog picked up as it usually does when the sun breaks the horizon. Uh, and then the fog got so intense now that it's kind of holding back the sun again. It's kind of uh, taking us back in time, if you will. It's kind of interesting to see how that works. All right, so now I'm kind of left with a, a split decision to make. Uh, who knows how much longer this fog will stick around. It seems to only be getting more intense just off to my left here. Uh, so I kind of want to drive over to the Peninsula North End uh, parking lot, um, see what conditions look like over there, and then continue maybe to drive around uh, onto the other side directly across from where I'm at right now of those trees that I was just uh, showing some b-roll of That road that kind of sweeps through But uh, that sort of light beam shot might be getting kind of snuffed out right now by all this fog Which I mean is a good thing I guess um, I'm gonna stay here and grab a few more frames again of that scene that you guys just saw in the b-roll and then uh, I'll probably move down there 
reassess, and then I got to make it a, a split decision about when I want to get down to the Bridal Falls trailhead. Um, because if there is fog in there, you know, in the in the forest, actually, uh, that could make for a great shot, especially if we have some like you know foggy light rays kind of breaking through the canopy at the end of this little creek, Stoddard Creek. So, got to make that decision now. And I'm not good at making decisions like these. I always feel like uh, I'm I'm missing something, or I'm I'm gonna pass something up in the moment. All right, so I know I said I was gonna move. Um, but I only said that because I felt as though I needed to, but I'm glad I stayed in this exact spot because the conditions, you know, fog-wise and light-wise, just got so much better for the subjects that I was standing here photographing in the first place. Um, and I only waited maybe an extra five minutes or so, and uh, it's already paying off big time. I mean, <laughs> I'm probably going to have a lot of photos from this trip to, to share, but this one right now um, is absolutely phenomenal. Facing off towards the Red House Beach area, uh, there's another island down there, and uh, all of those pines in that island are casting really nice diagonal shadows, um, kind of similar to what we had earlier. And it's so good. It's so good. It's one of those photos you just see off the back of your camera and you already know. This is why we do these things, right? This is why we do them. So I'm just grabbing a couple frames. I've actually overexposed a couple of these. Um, I checked the histogram first, make sure nothing was clipping already. Um, but uh, I, I, I bumped it maybe by a 0.3 or 0.7, um, you know, additional, you know, exposure value, uh, just to help give those highlights a bit more punch. Um, otherwise, they might look a little flat, and then I'd have to boost them in post, which I guess wouldn't be a big problem. Something I'm experimenting with. This one though, right now, I'm shooting at basic, uh, base exposure. Not boosting it, not uh, <laughs> just look at this out here, it's crazy. I gotta cut to this B roll. This is nuts, man. This is nuts. So I have relocated, like I said I was going to do earlier, uh, to the north side of the lake. And uh, there's always this, been this, you know, patch of trees that's right near this dirt parking lot that's just behind me here that have always uh, intrigued me, I guess. You know, I always park here like 90% of the time, so I always see these trees. And... Uh, I said, you know, maybe maybe today's the day to explore them. And I put the 24 to 200 back on before I left the other spot. And I'm so glad I did because this tree right in front of me is just an absolute specimen. Yeah, that's good. Uh, we're going to go with a portrait orientation for this guy. Now, if my brother was here and I got the ID on this tree wrong, he'd probably be pretty upset with me. Because uh, it seems to be pretty straightforward. It's definitely a lot more stressful trying to vlog and shoot at the same time, but I definitely think I am making it work. Yeah, I knew I had a hunch though. I had a hunch that uh, these trees up here would be great. I mean, I knew about the ones behind me here, but these... Um, I want to say these two over here are aspens, this other one I'm not sure of. But yeah, these look to be probably a quaking aspen of some sort, some kind of aspen tree. You can tell by that uh, white bark. And another dead giveaway of the aspen versus something like a birch is that aspen trees will have, at the, the, the older ones anyways, um, they won't have that classic white paper bark uh, at the bottom of the trunk it'll start to look like standard furrowed you know 
with all the ridges and stuff, standard tree bark, I guess. Uh, I probably did a really, uh, really bad job at explaining that just now, but yeah, hopefully that makes sense. The big dead giveaway again with the aspens is the base of the trunk. If it's no longer white paper bark at the base, then you're probably looking at an aspen. And you can tell it's a quaking aspen too, as if the leaves rustle with the faintest bit of wind. That's why they're called quaking or trembling aspen. But yeah, a little bit of tree knowledge for you guys. Free tree knowledge, just handing it out. All right, we are going to move positions. Got a little video so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. The fog is starting to burn off a tad, in some spots anyways. Also, this might seem a bit random. Uh, well, I guess I should preface this by saying I'm, I'm glad to get some other photos here that are not necessarily just of Red House Lake, because when I first started shooting here, I was really impressed by the, you know, the wide angle views and such. I mean, how could you not be? Uh, and of course, as my, you know, photography tastes and stuff like that mature, you start to see other things because Again, I mean, for me personally, I can only shoot the same wide angle sunrise or sunset so many times before I'm looking for something else. Um, but I'm so glad to finally now be at a point, uh, just over a year after having uh, been shooting this area, this park as a whole, I should say. Yeah, because I've only been photographing Allegheny State Park since April of 2023. Um, and this year, at least spring into now, I feel like I've been making really great strides at capturing other things, you know, within those just big wide angle lake shots. So that's great. And it's, it's going to help build a lot of diversity and stuff that's been lacking in my portfolio for the locations that I've been shooting. Letchworth, Evangola, Allegheny, especially for the, the books that I'm working on. And this is kind of segueing into what I was talking about when I first started this clip. Um, the idea with the book, I've changed it uh, a decent chunk now, actually. Not, like, crazy different. Like, obviously we're still focusing on the uh, natural landscapes of Western New York. Unofficial title. But I've decided to split the project up into multiple locations and multiple volumes and I brought this up with a few of my other photographer friends they both kind of came to the the same conclusion that one book for all of these locations with all of the images that I have is probably just too much and I definitely agree with them and uh, I think it'll like give me more time um, you know as I focus on writing and shooting one book uh, to build up material for the next because uh, admittedly um, the fall and winter seasons for pretty much all of the locations are very lacking uh, when it comes to the spring and summer photos that I've been getting. It's nice to have that little uh, extra bit of breathing room, if you will, now that uh, I'm splitting this project up. All right, so I think these trees I am good with for now. I think now it's probably a good time to go check out the creek. I think that's probably what it's time to do.
Okay, so the Bridal Falls is actually flowing compared to last time. Not flowing at max capacity by any means, at least from other pictures I've seen, but it's a big improvement uh, from what I saw last time. So I will go ahead and take a stab at it. Got the polarizer on, aperture priority still, same thing. F11, I've got a really nice foreground sort of cascade here that kind of leads up to the falls, but it's definitely gonna need a little working. Right now I have like the whole falls in the shot, but I'm thinking maybe if I crop in and get some of the more just prominent cascades and leave the rest. Now I do have some intense highlights up on the banks over there. Now I could try to just bracket those, but I honestly feel like maybe I should reposition instead just to exclude them from the frame all to begin with, which is definitely easier said than done. Right, we're gonna give a bracket a go, minus three, and we'll see what that does. Also the other creek that I shot in the photo that I posted called Fallen, um, there was a little sort of creek that ran under that, a small little waterfall, if you even wanna call it that, a rapid, I don't know. Um, it looks to be flowing a bit more now than it was last time, um, although I don't think it's enough to warrant re-attempting the shot um, because it really needs a lot of flow. Like we need a lot of snow melt or heavy, heavy continued rain in order for that to, I think, fully work. Just shifting down a little bit to include another little, there's like four little mini cascades here, um, points where there's like white water that'll pick up really nicely in the long exposure. So I'm trying to include an extra one here in the bottom. I feel like this is a shot that I'll only really be able to tell if it's gonna work is when I see it blown up on a monitor. But I mean, it's looking pretty promising right now. Underexposing is definitely helping tame those highlights. I'm kind of focusing on the mid ground right now too. If the waterfall in the background is a little bit soft, I don't think it's gonna bother me that much. I really don't wanna do a focus stack right here. I think that would be a, a nightmare in post-processing. I'm sure Helicon Focus could take care of it, but. So as you guys just saw, I just uh, did a little creek walking down there to take some different angles on that composition I photographed uh, when I was here last time on August 7th at sunset or in the evening. And uh, last time I shot it, I was on the left side of the creek and this time around I was on the right side of the creek and there was some great light hitting that little cascade um, just beneath the log. and. Looking back now, it's, uh, it's completely gone, so I got it at the right time. But what initially drew me back over to that composition to begin with was the sloping uh, little ridge line there. Um, had some great light on it, still does actually, kind of giving some uh, trees some nice, uh, some nice lighting. So I messed up, so went over there, messed around with some stuff, found a cool little abstract scene, some uh, trees reflecting in the water. Um, and the very nice ripples on the water. I had to bump it up to like ISO 6400 um, and uh, stop down quite a bit to get the shutter speed I wanted, one over 400. Uh, and I wanted to keep the polarizer on because I think it's adding a nice extra punch of contrast and uh, vibrance, which if it's too much, of course, I can always tone down later. But I remember the last time I was here, I uh, took a video with my phone and I saw a really unique reflection in that little pond or uh, that little creek bed back there. And I was like, why didn't I see that the first time around. So um, I wanted to mess around with some reflections in that little pooling part of, of Stoddard Creek. Um, and it's nothing a, a little Lightroom AI denoise can't fix. But right now, I'm just gonna kinda hang out here for a little bit, enjoy the sights, the sounds. Which I imagine most if not all of the fog around the lake has burned off, but what an experience that was. It might be the outing of the year. And we still have, uh, what, four months to go, so. So it is currently 10.07, and I've been here for about almost exactly four hours now. Uh, I did spend a little extra time looking for some small scenes, 
some success, mostly failures, I think, but it is what it is. I don't know if my brain's like super in the uh, the mood for small scenes, especially with how the uh, the morning started. But I think I got a couple things from the uh, creek bed of uh, Stoddard Creek here. Uh, I am gonna go back to the trailhead, eat my lunch that I brought, and uh, figure out what to do from there. I thought I might want to go visit Quaker right now in the uh, the early morning light, but uh, I have no service, so I can't even see what the uh, cloud condition is. I think it was mainly calling for some high cloud. I, I really can't see much other than a few high wispy clouds out there. So, uh, yeah, maybe that's something I'll save for another time. But I'm going to head back to the trailhead now and eat some lunch and kind of figure out what the uh, plan of attack is going to be from there. I'm back at Stoddard Hollow and it is just after 11 o'clock and I think I'm gonna go ahead and round off the trip right here uh, where we started and uh, I'm gonna head it home but if you'd like to stay up to date with everything that I'm doing photography wise I highly recommend you check out my social media pages uh, my Facebook and my Instagram those are gonna be where I'm the most active there'll be links to those down in the description um, also my website will be down in the description uh, you can check out all my work on there. You can also buy work if you want as well um, on there. Uh, I will also be adding sort of like a up-and-coming project section to my website, keeping you guys posted on what my bigger overarching plans are, um, you know, as time goes on. So that's going to be a new change coming to the website. And, uh, yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you around.